الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد المرسلين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين ويسكن الله سبحانه وتعالى that he makes of the people who seek the akhirah and are not enslaved by their desires likewise we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he purifies us with his purification and that he accepts our tawbah and our return back to him this is now another session where we are looking at the poem Mimiya by Ibn Qayyim rahimahullah and this is a poem which is predominantly really talking about the pilgrimage and how he describes what the pilgrim goes through and seeing the Kaaba and performing Tawaf and the different aspects of the Hajj and the Umrah. And we have reached line 82 from some 200 verses. And in this final remaining part of the poem, he talks about the actual benefit of the Hajj and the pilgrimage, which is that the person seeks the Akhirah. He becomes a better person. He gets close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So in these verses here, he is talking about the Hal or the situation of the person who follows his desires and how a person rejects knowledge after it has come to him. Now here we are not talking about knowledge of a scholar or a student of knowledge. Here we are talking about anyone who should know better. And then in the verses that come after, inshallah, we'll be looking at these over the coming weeks of the life of this dunya, hal dunya wa qurbu zawaliha. It says here in the contents page, he talks about the station of the dunya and how the dunya is about to end. Al-Aish fi dunya ala annaha mamar la maqar. Living in the life of this dunya is a passing, not a place of residence. And then he has a reminder Tathkir wa nasiha lissahi al-ghafil For the person who is negligent And then he ends his poem Wasf yawm al-qiyamah A description of the last day Al-wasiyah bi ishtigal Haluhu al-haya A recommendation Of how to spend your life Wasf hal ahl al-jannah verses of poetry in talking about the situation and the joy of the people of Jannah. But inshallah, in today's session, like we have said, we're going to look at the verses from 82 onwards in which he's talking about a person who is deluded by his desires. So he says, He's saying, Ibn Qayyim, rahimahullah, O those who have been driven with a life for Allah as your Lord, stop at where you're supposed to and submit. Meaning those people who are able to control their desires and understand the reality of the life of this dunya and that the purpose is the akhirah, these people are living their life as Allah as their Lord. So for them, the command here from Ibn Qayyim, stop at where you're supposed to stop and submit. وَقُولُوا مُحِبٍ قَادَهُ الشَّوْقُ نَحْوِكُمْ قَضَى نَحْبَهُ فِيكُمْ تَعِيشُ وَتَسَلَّمُوا And say to your driver, meaning your desires, and say to your driver, is your love, and your desire to please Allah is your direction, meaning control your desires. Figure out a way with the assistance of Allah to protect yourself. And if you are able to do that, you will be able to surrender. You will deliver your love, and this is how you live and surrender. 
Then he says, Rahimullah, Qadallahu Rabbul Arshi Fima Qada Bihi Bi Anna Hawa Yu'mi Kulub Wa Yubkimu. Allah, the judge, the Lord of the Arsh, and he judges with what he uh, he judges by. He has judged that desires blinds the heart and will leave your tongue mute. Meaning when you follow your desires, your heart will become blind. يُعْمِنْ قُلُوب وَيُبْكِمُ And you will talk, your tongue will move, but it will not come up with anything which is logical. So there will be no difference between a person who is using his tongue and a person who is mute. Why? Because of desires. وَحُبُّكُمْ أَسْلُ الْهُدَى مَدَارُهُ عَلَيْهِ وَفَوْزٌ لِلْمُحِبِّ وَمَغْنَمُ Your love is the foundation of your guidance. أَسْلُ الْهُدَى وَمَدَارُهُ And it revolves around it. Meaning your love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the foundation of your guidance. If you don't love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, there will be no guidance. Therefore the fact that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guides his servants is because he knows that they love him. And that love revolves around that guidance. وَحُبُّكُمْ أَسْلُ الْهُدَى وَمَدَارُهُ عَلَيْهِ وَفَوْزٌ So success to those who love لِلْمُحِبِّ وَمَغْنَمُ So success to those who love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and have that foundation and what a great treasure they have. وَمَغْنَمُ وَتَفْنَى إِذَامُ الصَّبِّ بَعْدُ مَمَاتِهِ وَأَشْرَاقُهُ وَقْفٌ عَلَيْهِ مُحَرَّمُ Such a person will be showered in goodness after his death because of his love. بَعْدَ مَمَاتِهِ Because of his love. وَأَشْرَاقُهُ وَقْفٌ عَلَيْهِ مُحَرَّمُ And stopping yourself and stopping yourself from this love is only a means for you to make yourself deprived. So here we have clearly seen what he is saying, Rahimullah, if you are able to channel your desires in the way which is beloved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that is success. But for those people who are not able to walk from Muhammad, the person who is not able to stop himself and his desires take the better of him, get the better of him, and then that love and that guidance is then compromised for Allah, he's only deprived himself. فَيَا أَيُّهَا الْقَلْبُ الَّذِي مَلَكَ الْهَوَى أَزِمَّتَهُ هَتَّى مَتَى ذَاتَ لَوَّمُ So, oh, which heart is possessed by its desires. So, oh, which heart which is possessed, ملك الهوى, possessed by its desires. This person's heart is just controlled by his desires. You stick to it. حَتَّى مَتَى ذَا تَلَوَمُ Until you will be blamed. When will you be blamed? Perhaps in the dunya, but definitely in the qabr. وَهَتَّى لَا تَسْحُوا وَقَدْ قَرُّبَ الْمَدَى Why don't you wake up when the time has drawn near? In like he is saying before, if you delay too much, then you will be blamed. So why don't you wake up now? وَدُنَّتْ قُوسُ الْسَيْرِ وَالنَّاسُ نَوَّمُ But the time has drawn near. But the problem is, is that people are being pushed forward and they're still sleeping. They're being pushed forward and they're sleeping based on their desires. Ibn Uthameen, rahimahullah, he says, Meaning, we've all got the opportunity right now to do something about our desires and the love that we claim that we have for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You've got the opportunity right now, before those opportunities will no longer be available. Why? Because of death. بَلَا سَوْفَ تَسْحُوا حِينَ يَنْكَشِفُ غَطَعَ وَيَبْدُوا لَكَ الْأَمْرُ الَّذِي أَنْتَ تَكْتُمُوا Allahu Akbar. But you will wake up and the cover will be removed and it will be shown to you that which you constantly hid by covering it. The cover will be removed, 
But because of our desires, we continue to cover what is the actual eventuality, which is death. Ibn Uthaymeen, he's saying, this is because this is the day of recompense, meaning when you enter the grave. So the cover will be removed. But in the dunya, what you were doing is you were kept covering yourself away from that day of recompense, as if it wasn't there. So you put yourself between it and a barrier. The Yawm Al-Qiyamah, even when you enter the grave, the author is saying, Rahimahullah, وَيَبْدُوا لَكَ الْأَمْرُ And it will be made clear to you, That which you used to seal for yourself. And Uthaymeen, Rahimahullah, is saying, this is because this is the day of recompense, and there are no longer days of acting. So for the person who is able to control his desires, right now is the day of acting, and he is waiting for the day of recompense. For the person who wants his desires, right now is the day of recompense because he's getting all of his Jannah. And then when it's too late, he will feel, okay, I want to act now. Now here he is talking about the person who knows, the person of knowledge. But like I said to you guys before, it isn't about a scholar, it isn't about a student of knowledge, it's about anyone who knows the reality of the life of this dunya and the purpose that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has sent us. He says here, Oh you who has lit the fire for others to see, like a lantern. This lantern here, is bringing light for everyone else to see. But at the same time, because of the fact that, yes, okay, he is benefiting others, but he forgets himself, he's following his desires himself, its heat is burning itself from within. And if you think about this parable, you will see that it is actually quite profound. You have a light, that light is benefiting everyone else but the proof is already being established upon himself. So what's happening with that light, with the fire within it? It is melting the wax or the oil from within. So he's only harming himself. Is this the knowledge that you have seeded? Is this what you wanted to eat from after you had seeded it? Meaning, is this what you wanted from it? Is this what you wanted from La ilaha illallah? Is this what you wanted from your good deeds? You put these seeds down so that other people will bend it, but you forget yourself. Is this the fruits that you wanted to eat? This is your share that you were pleased with for yourself with two intentions he had two intentions and he's going to talk about what they are you wanted status and dirham jahum wa dirham Ibn Uthaymeen rahimahullah after he had this he says Allahu Akbar this is the source for all actions for the people of the dunya meaning there are no people who are connected to the life of this dunya and the dunya has overtaken their desires, even for the people of knowledge, even for the people within Islam, except that there are two things which is making them slip up. Either status or wealth. Either status or wealth. These two are the keys for a person's desires. And if they are not careful with they mean is continuing, they'll have one of these two lowly intentions, meaning all he will get from the life of this dunya is those rewards of status or wealth from the dunya alone, that's it. But in actual fact, he says later on, not here, not in this footnote, but he says later on, that it could also be that a person, he wants from the life of this dunya status and knowledge, sorry, status and wealth, 
and he might not even get it. How many people are seeking the life of this dunya, but they are still poor, and they're seeking the life of this dunya, and they still don't have any status? So he's working for the dunya, forgetting the akhirah, but he doesn't get the dunya, he doesn't get the akhirah. So how blameworthy are they, Ibn Thaymin is saying here? He only does good deeds for himself, for his own desires. So what is correct? How can we control our desires? That we do things to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. To seek the face of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَهَذَا هُوَ الْرِبْهُ الَّذِي قَدْ كَسَبْتَهُ لعمرك لا ربه ولا أسلم يسلم. This is the profit that you wanted to gain for yourself. This is the money that you wanted to earn. But he says, buy your life, and this is a way that the Arabs use. I mean, it's not swearing an oath by other than Allah. لا عمرك لا ربه ولا أسلم يسلم. There is no profit. There is no money. There is no foundation. That which you have submitted with. And he spoke the truth, Rahimullah. The people of desires, they don't benefit, and the people of desires have no foundation, yet they submit to their desires. So, what are they submitting to? Something which is hawa. There's just nothing there. Bakhilta bi shayin la yadurrukubadluhu. You were stingy with something that couldn't harm you by getting, meaning the life of this dunya. You were stingy with the life of this dunya, meaning a person, he wants the life of this dunya, and he acquires the life of this dunya, and he clings on to it, but by clinging on to that thing, it can't harm you in the, in the slightest, and it can't benefit you in the slightest. وَجُدْتَ بِشَيْءٍ مِثْلُهُ لَا يُقَوَّمُ When you could have worked hard for something which has no comparison, which is what? Jannah. بخلت بذا هذ الخصيص دناءة وجدت بدال الخلد لو كنت تفهم You were stingy with something which is worthless No real value the life of this dunya Stingy, holding on to something which is not even worth it But you could have found it in an internal home If only you understood The thing that you wanted, that you were holding on for You're not going to get it no matter how much you want from the life of this, you're not going to get it here. But you could have found it. If only you understood in a land which is Darul Khuld, a place which is everlasting. You sold. What has pleasures in the akhirah, na'eeman, al-anqida'a lahu, which will never end, which has no imitation, wala nadhir, with something which is paltry, as in it has very little value, bibakhsin, and qalil, nothing. But then on top of that, sayyu'adamu. It will perish. And this is what he was saying, that I was saying to you before. Nuthaymin rahimullah. Even if you were to get the dunya, is still not worth it. But that is the case for those people who actually get the dunya. For most people, they will not get the dunya in the way that they wanted. So then what is the purpose? What is the solution? The purpose and the solution is to seek Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to rectify our intentions. And to seek knowledge. Obviously, this is now within the context of the Qayyim rahimahullah talking about the people seeking in but seeking knowledge and getting closer to Allah doing good deeds for his sake so that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will accept and be pleased with our intentions should we stop here or should I carry on I feel like carrying on I don't want to make it lengthy what do you think silence is of approval فهلا عكست الأمر إن كنت هازما ولكن أدعت الهزم لو كنت تعلم How have you turned the matter عكست الأمر You've turned it upside down meaning the dunya to the akhirah 
if you only you were accurate but you have lost your accuracy if only you knew لو كنت تعلم وتهدم ما تبني بكفك جاهدا and you have destroyed everything that you have built because of your abstinence abstinence for what? the abstinence for the akhirah you were stingy when it comes to the akhirah towards your own akhirah and because of that you have destroyed everything that you have built فَأَنْتَ مَدَ الْأَيَّامِ تُبَنِّي وَتَهْدِمُوا all of these days you were building and you were building and you were building and then it is demolished it's 50 years, 60 years, 70 years what happens at the end of it Ibn Thaymeen rahimahullah he says this is the example of a person who's doing good deeds but his bad deeds, his desires destroys it he oppresses himself, he corrupts himself then with that there is the destruction but if he did good deeds sincerely and he controlled his desires and he was just then none of this would have happened however how many people do you find destroying themselves look at this now when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands you with something you're like a corpse desires when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wa in the muradillah when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants from you something when he commands you something tafna kamayt you're still as if you are dead you hear hey Allah said I hear fala I'm sorry I don't hear anything wa in the muradin nafs but when your desires command you with something tusdi wa tulhim you move forward what told him when you start dreaming? I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that. I'm going to gain this and I'm going to get that. Wa in the khilaf al amri tahtadju bi qada. Look at this now. When you have contradicted the command of Allah, you just say, "This is what Allah decreed. It wasn't meant for me. I was supposed to do good deeds, yeah, but it wasn't meant for me." Tahtadju bi qada. You use the qada of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. ظَهِيرًا عَلَى الرَّحْمَانِ لِلْجَبْرِ تَزْعُمُ Ardent against Al-Rahman thinking that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is to blame because of your abstinence and your disobedience of Him subhanahu wa ta'ala. What's the problem? Desires. تُنَزِّهُ مِنْكَ النَّفْسِ أَنْ سُوءٍ فِعْلُهَا You will remove any deficiency from your desires. Your desires tells you to do something, your desires is infallible. Nothing wrong with it. The food and the drink and the wealth and the dunya, nothing wrong with it. Go and seek it. Your desires is infallible. It can't command you with anything bad. But when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands you with something, you try and seek fault in it. It's too hard, Fajr, it's too hard. Why every day? وَتُتْعِبُ أَقْدَارِ إِلَهِ وَتَذْلِمُ You seek then to find fault in the command of Allah. This is all talking about desires. There's no sane person who says, La ilaha illallah, who's going to say any of these things. But what he is saying here, this is the struggle with every single one of us with our desires. This is what he's talking This the hidden thing that is happening inside. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands you with something, you seek fault in it. Hence your own oppression. Hence your desire and your nafs and your hawa overtaking. You make halal that which the sharia aqdaha has locked away. The sharia has made certain boundaries for you. And it has protected you from harm. It has protected you from things which are not good for you, but you want to seek to unlock them. وَتَقْصِدُ مَا قَدْ حَلَّهُ الشَّرْءُ تُبْرِمُ Intending that which the Sharia has stopped you from should be blamed for putting that barrier between you and it. 
Ibn Thaymin rahimahullah says this is the characteristics of man wahiya min sifat al-insan al-mathmum this is the blameworthy characteristics of man the complete opposite of the reality as to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created us for and the revelation that he has sent down which is supposed to be a guidance for us but because of our desires we've turned it upside down وَتَفْهَمُوا مِنْ قَوْلِ الرَّسُولِ خِلَافَ مَا أَرَادْ لِأَنَّ الْقَلْبَ مِنْكَ مُعَجَّمُوا You intend from the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam from his Sunnah, from his religion that he has left for us to follow different to what he actually intended himself Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam This is because your heart <coughs> is foreign to him Now look at this line here, 103 He is basically saying that the reason why people slip up and follow their desires is because of their conflicting with what Muhammad has come with. When a person says he's not going to follow him, or he wants to follow him according to his own desires and the conditions that he has placed on himself, that is when your heart becomes foreign to what he came with, with the purpose of your desires. You are no longer following him. You are following your desires, either by rejecting him outright or trying to make it fit in with your desires. Muti'un bidda'in ghayi asin li rushdihi ila rabbihi yawman yuraddu wa yu'lamu. Obeying the call of the sinful transgressor, seeking the guidance of the sinful transgressor, meaning your desires. You obey seeking the guidance of your desires, although your desires quite often will be a sinful transgressor. <laughs> Until a day when you will return to your Lord and then you will know. <laughs> he loses the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by cheating himself. Muhinun belittling himself laha anna yuhabbu wa yukramu if only he loved it meaning the command of Allah if only he loved it and showed respect to it instead of his own desires Ibn Uthaymin rahimahullah said he could have prepared for tomorrow by tawbah meaning every single one of us is going to slip up so hence the word tawbah is very important here tawbah and istighfar and going back to Allah and checking ourselves but he lost that also. So Yom al he had the opportunity. He had the opportunity to be of a position of respect and nobility. بَطِيءٌ عَنِ الطَّاعَاتِ أَسْرَأُوا لِلْخَنَاءِ مِنِ السَّيْرِ فِي مَجْرَاهُ لَا يَتَقَسَّمُ Slow in doing acts of obedience, but he is quick to deceive the desires. Slow in doing acts of obedience, but quick to deceive. Like a running flood without any partition. Meaning your desires will be a flood, wave upon wave, without any kind of a dam or a barrier. But when it comes to good deeds, that flowing is not there. There's a drought. وَتَزْعَمُ مَا هَذَا بِأَنَّكَ عَارِفٌ كَثَبْتَ with this you think yourself to have knowledge. With this you think yourself to be safe. With this you think, yeah, I know it. I know everything. I've studied Quran. I've studied... Uh, I went to Madrasa when I was small. Uh, and I pray every now and then. Yeah, I've got some mistakes, but I'll be okay. You think yourself to be in a position of knowledge and ability when you have actually clearly lied in that which you thought yourself to have why? because of your desires and the good deeds don't match up Ibn Uthaymin is saying if a person knew himself if a person knew himself and he knew he was misguided and he knew that guidance isn't easily obtained he'd do something about it 
Allahu Akbar. He's saying every single one of us has some kind of misguidance. I don't think there's anybody in the world who can claim even that he's not got anything wrong with him. And in order for him to bring rectification, he also has to admit now that, okay, I've got some serious problems. And in order for me to get the guidance of Allah, it's not going to be easy. I have to work hard. So Nathameen Rahimullah is saying here, yes, so he'd do something about it. But what's the problem here? The problem is our desires. He remains misguided. He doesn't think there is a problem. And this is a calamity. The words of Nathameen Rahimullah. Why? Because of desires. Line 109. إِذَا كَانَ هَذَا نُصْحُ عَبْدٍ لِنَفْسِهِ If this is how the servant advises himself, no, before that, 108. وَمَا أَنْتَ إِلَّا جَاهِلٌ ثُمَّ ظَالِمٌ Look at this now. You are nothing but an ignorant person, then an oppressor. إِنَّهُ كَانَ ذَلُومًا جَهُولًا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives this characteristic at the end of Surah Ahzab, to all of insan, jahil, zalim. وَمَا أَنْتَ إِلَّا جَاهِلٌ ثُمَّ ذَالٍ وَإِنَّكَ بَيْنَ الْجَاهِلَيْنِ مُقَدَّمُ And you are in between these two ignorances, meaning ignorance and dhulm, moving forward. As a human being, this is how you are moving forward. This is how you are living your life, because of desires. Ibn Thaymin is saying here, the jahil, he doesn't know that he is misguided. Why is a jahil jahil? Jahil is a person who doesn't have any knowledge. Why? Because of the fact that desires has overcome him. So he ends up being misguided because of the lack of knowledge. So he moves forward, as he is saying here, because of the lack of knowledge, happily living, or thinks he is happily living in his desires. ثُمَّ then, then he says, then you become an oppressor. How? Because the oppressor knows he is not guided. The oppressor knows that he is following his desires instead, but he is oppressing himself because he is not doing anything about it. 109. If this is how the servant advises himself, again look here, this is how he is talking. He is talking about what is going on in every single one of our hearts, in every single one of these hidden conversations that we have. Here Ibn, Ibn Qayyim Rahim was saying, if this is how you are advising yourself in your own private thoughts, فَمَنْ ذَا الَّذِي مِنْهُ هُدَى يُتَعَلَّمُ So who then will be guided and will learn? Meaning, if your desires is getting the better of you, telling you, yeah, you're fine, you can carry on, or it's okay, you can do it later, you are oppressing yourself, then which one of these advices that you are listening to from your own desires is actual nasiha? None of it. Why? Because of desires. So then which one of this is hidayah? Which one of this is going to be of education for our desires, for ourselves, for our souls? This is the situation. Every single one of us have read the Quran. And Nuqayim is saying here, this is the situation that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has described nation after nation that came before us. People before us have trodden on Allah's earth. And the best thing that a person has ever said, and this is going to summarize everything that we have done today, فَإِن كُنْتَ لَا تَدْرِي فَتِلْكَ مُصِيبَةٌ وَإِن كُنْتَ تَدْرِي فَالْمَصِيبَةُ أَعْذَمُ If you don't know, then this is a calamity. But if you knew, then the calamity is greater. If you don't know and you're living a life based on your desires, this is a calamity by itself. But imagine now you know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is your Lord and He has created you for a purpose and He has sent you Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He has sent you the best book with the best legislation, with the best sharia, with the best of actions, with the best of rewards. 
وَإِن كُنْتَ تَدْرِي So now that you know فَمُصِيبَةُ عَذَمُ Now that you know the calamity is far greater if you were to follow your desires. If you don't know, this is a calamity. But if you know, then the calamity is greater. These are some of the words of Ibn Qayyim, rahimahullah, when he's talking about the, the criticism of those people who are following their desires. In this, as you can also see, is his nasiha for every single one of us to bring our desires into check. And to seek Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to prepare for a day of standing in front of Him. And to be sincere in your intentions and to proceed forward in doing good deeds because soon you will return back to Him. And as the author, rahimahullah, has quite rightly said, that will be a day of recompense and not a day of action. That will be a day of either joy and everlasting bliss or punishment an everlasting regret. Imagine because of a person's desires, for eternity he will be regretting himself. That regret will never end. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for his protection and his afia. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for his hidayah and his nur. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for his elevation and his acceptance. And that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one that has created us and he has created us weak and he has created our souls that the Lord of our souls allows us to control our souls and that he gives us dominion over our souls in order to attain his pleasure and a blissful return back to him Hada wallahu a'lam sallallahu ala nabiyyina muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi